I'm moving, moving forward every day. Jesus, I just let him lead the way every second. Hi, good morning. This is Gideon St. Bryce again on JC 24-7. And we are here together with our guest, Darren Sandy and um, Andre Dillon, better known as Ziggy, to continue our discussion on crime and its effects here in our Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. But we are concentrating more specifically on Trinidad, the island on which we live. So thank you for joining us and we're trusting that your stay with us this morning will be one that is empowering, one that is beneficial. And of course, feel free to uh, reach out to us if you think that there is need for some help on 351-5030-351-5030. We will give that number again at the end uh, in case there is some sort of empowerment, some reaching out that you want to do, that's the number to call. So, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Thanks good morning. For, for, for continuing this discussion. We, we had, uh, I think, a fruitful time the last time, and where we spoke about, about crime, we spoke about um, why people engage in crime to some degree in pursuit of happiness. We spoke about who we think um, should be held accountable to, 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 to that. Of course, not strictly those persons, but there are people that sometimes escape the, 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 the um, discerning eye of, of that scrutiny. And we're also saying, however, that there is an effect that, that crime has on, on society. It's a, 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 a stealing of the, of the heart, a stealing of, of that sense of, of security. Not you guys, you all feel comfortable, right? <laughs> but but, but a, a number of, of us in society feel a little uncomfortable about what is happening around them in terms of crime That's and so that kind of way. But, yes. <laughs> but I, I, I want to ask the direct question, though, as we, as we get into the discussion, in terms of how do you see from your, from your exploits? Um, you, you were moving about... Karanaj Maloney, but you all have been. Tabidi, Arima. Yeah, all over the place. Tobago, eh? Tobago, yeah, yes, see, and I Tobago. <laughs> Specifically, too, but Tobago too. Yes. But but tell me, how, how do you see crime, or how has it been explained to you by those you interact with in terms of the effects of crime? I mean, it's probably kind of a wide question, vague question, but but answers as best as you can. Um, For me, is the... The person in taxi stand late in the night that I pass in straight now. No, not because I afraid they're a man, but I just I stop picking up people, Ziggy. I used to really pick up people. I remember when I was with Ben Maloney. I, I, I am a maxi driver. I am a maxi driver. That's my work to pick up. I used to pick up people and drop them home, but I stopped doing that. Not for my own for my own safety, from but from the perspective of yeah, but I feel somebody might just pin something on me or some kind in this kind of way. Um, especially women, I do. I am picking. I'm no woman. Rain could be falling. I pass. I had to pass your street because I know one. Oh my God! You know, listen, <laughs> I know one that it could be a very uncomfortable experience for based on the, the nature of society right. now with, with violence against women. Women, and I know it could also put me in a, in a very weird position mm -hmm. if that woman also go missing after coming out of my, my vehicle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is there problem. Are and the, I am not a the, taxi driver. The poet. The so, poet. So that is problem. So I, I stopped that about two years ago, right, be, right before COVID. I, I just realized I stopped doing it because, and, and like, that is an effect of crime. Yeah. In terms of just changing people's, uh, the most mundane things that you might do as a person, even trying to do good, you have to be careful. Yeah. You can't just go and go in your neighbor yard and sweep leaf and things. Yeah. We used to do that a long time. Long time, you know, yes. Leaf for you. So I sweep your yard there and your neighbor yard. There are leaves. You, you go know? in your neighbor yard and 
pick up plum out. Yeah, you can't do them thing again. Like my, my mother would send us if we rain started to fall and our neighbors clothes were on the line. My mother would send us yeah, to pick up the clothes and you can't do that. You can't pick up clothes. pull out. You can't do that and like yeah. things like correcting people's yeah. children for doing wrong things. Mm-hmm. Like, like you just can't do certain mm-hmm. things again because how society have changed. How people are people living in, in their own cages. In their own cages. So and self. The, the belly cages for themselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that is a clear, clear definition of effects of crime. Um, also, for me, I am seeing the mindset of the people who are living in this, and I don't even want to call them hotspots. They are seeing that nobody cares for us. Mm-hmm. So I have to build my own ecosystem mm-hmm. and care for myself. And majority of the time, the ecosystem that they build is anti-society. Mm-hmm. So they, they, are, they are seeing, um, I think last last time you talk about this girl who got her chain snatched. Mm-hmm. You would not believe that that is a job. You go out there and your job is to bring in probably 5 ounces, 10 ounces, 20 ounces of gold. And you better do come back. You know, I, I I was teaching in a class. I was I was teaching in a class and in, in a real nice community and little girl was giving real trouble, like a real after school program. The girl was giving real trouble. And I just put her in the corner and I don't know the girl mother was in the school at the time. And the girl mother, this is a, a little standard tree, jacked this girl up to the height of the blackboard. And say, if I had to ever come back and talk to you again, I would send you on the street to sell chocolate. Now, I'd stand a tree here going and sell chocolate. And I said, punishment. So, when you drop out of school, what are you going to do? What, what, mm-hmm. for me to survive, I'm going to send you out there and your better has come. Mm-hmm. Come back with products. Um, and, and you would find people brass face and do care because the consequence of not contributing to their societies are yeah. greater than what we will think. We, we might put you in jail, but we, who am I them? They will kill you. And and that is straight out the effects of crime. You know? Um, and, and, and another thing too, when, when, when you look at murders, somebody will take a gun and shoot a man and one would see, okay, a child lost their father. But the reality is, Two children lost their father because when that man who is who who, who perpetrated the crime <coughs> is convicted, mm-hmm. he's taken away from his children for ten years, fifteen years, twenty-five years, or so forever, have, or forever. <laughs> and you have now these two sets of children coming up in society with no set of guidance. This is also the effects of crime. Yeah. Mm. I, I've seen I've seen it also impact people's economically because the fact of the matter is. The, the businessman that now has to protect his business yeah. and with additional security measures, mm-hmm. uh, all of that is cost, economic yeah. cost, mm-hmm. and they're passing that on to, mm-hmm. to the price of the product, and and we have to pay for it. Yes. yes. So that so that when when your 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 dollar had X amount of purchasing power long ago because of crime, the the, the, the purchasing power of your dollar is now decreasing mm-hmm. Less. because the businessman has to treat with. The, the, the threat of crime mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so all, all those things are, are already um, effects of crime they I, I don't know in terms of the stats that we have in in, in Trinidad is not necessarily always up to date mm-hmm. at least it's not made available to the to the public in real time mm-hmm. but what I have um, in terms of 2018 I think from the CSO in respect to the people who have been placed in prison. Now, the Trinidad population is about 1.4 million. Mm-hmm. And the majority of that are females, something to the tune of 729,000. Male is something like um, 685,000. Don't know why Darren's and, smiling. Right? That, that kind of figure. <laughs> but, but, so we have, <laughs> so we, have more, we have more males than, so more females, females than, than males me. in the society. Yeah. But I, I checked the, this year, so and they're saying, and, and, and I'm going to show this at you. Is there an underlying um, effect to this reality? So in 2018, we had 700 and, 
7,265 persons imprisoned. All right? 6,850 of that number were males. 415 of that number were females. But we have more females than males. So, I mean, this is, this is a whooping disparity in terms of numbers. Is there is there underlying cause? Is there underlying effect to, to, to our males really being the, the persons that are being imprisoned? I want to start off with a joke. I want to say, and this is a joke, this is a joke, <laughs> <laughs> that the women just not getting catch. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. Now, now I want to start off by saying the women are getting catch. I believe that there are more women in this country that are doing real crime, but they just you not will get cancer. <laughs> <laughs> you will get cancer. <laughs> well, it's a joke, right? It's a joke. <laughs> no, 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 no. We can take a joke. We can take a joke. Um, um, but seriously, um, mm-hmm. if we take our role model, our men, the people who t- teach our boys how to navigate life mm-hmm. and we incarcerate them. And we incarcerate them for things that might not necessarily need incarcerating for mm-hmm. in this day and age, right? And, and we put them in a system and we leave those boys unattended. And we leave those boys for their mothers to bring them up. Those boys will end up in jail. And as a serious, and I, I don't necessarily need to be a criminologist. If my father end up in jail, chances are, I might not. My father was a maxi driver. Guess what I am? <laughs> you know where I'm from? Yeah. Chances father's are, what? <laughs> father's a teacher. Oh, you oh, see? Sorry, and guess sorry. what he is? <laughs> a lot of... Uh, you, you, you will find doctors, mm. their sons, yeah. their daughters <laughs> falling into the tree. So if my, if my father, the person who brought me here, the person who provided for me, the person who, who gave me my first sweetie, providing that only fathers give all the sweetie. But yeah... But that give me that joy, that chew me up in the air, that make me feel so giddy with joy. If he end up in jail, where where, where am I ending? Mm-hmm. Where am I going to go? And who is going to step in for him? And that's the problem that we not have. That, that's, the, that's the problem we having. We're not having enough people stepping in into the broken Because the, the fact of the matter is, on very few occasions, somebody move from being a very noble upright citizens and end up in jail mm-hmm. yeah. very few times that 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 will normally happen whether we know what's happening or not that that journey from from freedom to being in prison is that incremental something mm-hmm. yeah. that children generally will observe mm-hmm. or absorb you know even though it's not being taught but it's being caught mm-hmm. by, by the children yeah. and, and therefore they are absorbing that mm. And, and, and as you said last week, that there are really um, responsibilities of, of the adult to, in, the, in the lives of these children to, to, to be very intentional in terms of what we are, what we are projecting into the hearts and minds of, 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 of these young people. Yeah. Yeah, I want to touch on that, that gender disparity as well. Um, because... I mean, as much strides that, that feminist movements would have made over the past decade or so, um, a lot of the responsibility for security and providing still rests on the, on the male. Um, and, and the males, males are raised in that way, that, that as a male, uh, there's a need to provide, there's a need to defend. Um, and if we go back to the, our last discussion and we were speaking about the things that they want, if you want to provide and you want to defend as, as a natural male instinct, then you'll do that by any means necessary sometimes. And of course, when you're in the, the wrong situation or the wrong environment, you'll just end up, end up defending illegally 
and, and they'll end up incarcerated, whereby the, the pressure might not be on that woman because the woman is being taken care of with the gun money and the drug money. So, so the pressure is not necessarily on her. And most times, you know, in police raid a house with drugs, they're supposed to arrest everybody. Them just taking who they know is the drug man and they're going to it, which is, is good. It's fair police judgment. But the woman, of course, is not being incarcerated in a situation like that. Um, so, so when we have these programs like the, the Empower program going around in communities, I see these programs as very important. And the minister, that is Shamfa Kojo, was saying, and I'll kind of paraphrase her, she would say that right now there are, there are so many grants and opportunities and programs targeted to females and female empowerment and stuff. But I, I'm not going to stop crime and thinking. You know? That not gonna answer. You could empower female from now till the cows come home. That not gonna answer any crime. It's the males that need to be targeted. The males need to be at the at the core of, of this this funding that, that is being spread, and and to really fill fill gaps that that gaps that are being left behind by by fathers taken away, by older brothers being taken away, and um young boys being raised by by guests almost. You know, not not diminishing the ability of a woman to raise a son, but just pointing at the obvious, the obvious gaps that will exist in, in a relationship like that. Yeah, um, is it that that some of these empowerment programs and and perhaps you all could talk to some of the things that you are involved, the mad um, keys, um, I act, mm-hmm. well, you know. Um, is it that some of these active, well, not yours, but I'm talking about what's out there. Is it that they are are not in a in a model that that can be that can be accessed by some of the people that most need it. I, I'll tell you what I need. What, what I mean, there's a young lady I know has uh, six children, and she she actually send her her daughters out uh, to bring money in, right? Mm-hmm. And I want to ask me what he mean, but then I give. Right. Yes. But that, that's what I mean. <laughs> you know, and. You know, and they they will they, they will they will do it. Some of them have left home now and they have their own homes and mm-hmm. so on. But 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 they're still taxed by the mother. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and when I when I discovered the mother, even with all that that power and all that, thing, she 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 cannot speak. She cannot read. She can't. She, mm-hmm. Now she's she's in her fifties, mm-hmm. but she cannot read. And I, I'm saying, is it that? When we said, for example, I, I always wondered, you know, we talk about all these things about COVID, all these different programs, but we are we are putting it out there in a form that the person who is illiterate can't access, can't access it. They don't even know that it is being offered because how it has been promoted is not not in that, you know. So I'm just wondering if we sometimes missing the target and um, so respond to that and then talk about some of the things that perhaps you all are doing in your companies to, to address some of those gaps? I think um, need assessment is a real thing. And um, patience also on both sides. On the side of the person who is given these programs and is on the side of the person who receives the program. Um, don't, don't just, don't, don't come and give me basketball. Don't bring a basketball court here and everybody hungry. No. <laughs> you know where I'm from? Yeah. Do, 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 your mama guy in me. Your really mama guy in me. I'm hungry. I, I can't pay my rent. You're not putting anything sustainable for me to earn an honest dollar. And that's a real thing there. To earn an honest dollar. So I, I'm not saying give my hand out. And a lot of these programs are just handouts for the authority to look good. Temporary sorry, handout. sorry to see. But the reality is, sustainability is giving me the ability to fish. Mm-hmm. Teach me how to fish. Yeah. Okay. But, but so, let, let me, so, because I'm asking, while there's a deficiency there, but there are some things that are, that are there, why, why are they not being accessed? As, as, because, and, and, and this is the answer, because yeah. when you teach me to do crochet, or, or to do some kind of sewing thing, because these are the programs that out oh, there are not knocking the programs, eh? Yeah. When you teach me to, 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 to bake upside down pineapple cake, and I go and stand up in front of the grocery, the grocery man can come in and run me. <laughs> I don't have a space for yeah. me to earn. 
So you're teaching me these things. You're teaching me computer science. You're teaching me this, that, the other. But how am I going to earn from this? But I have a little record, so nobody hired me after that. Exactly so. <laughs> how? So, so, so the needs assessment need to happen. And also patients where, where I could take... I ain't recognizing that, you know what's up? To build, to build this probably sustainable thing, I need to take some time, learn a proper skill, and put myself out there and let, and let that time, let that time gradually come that I could earn. Right about now, everybody wants quick solutions, and that is probably part of the problem too. That, that is my take on it. Yeah, um, and I, I, you look at the administrative body side, but I want to look at the side of the the people who these programs are targeted to, who sometimes um, don't don't access what's being offered um, for whatever reason. Um, sometimes is unfortunately sometimes it's just laziness mm-hmm. or lack of interest. Mm-hmm. Um, because they are, I've seen a lot of success stories from programs like YTEP and, and MyLat. Um, there are some excellent programs that you'll, you'll be hard pressed to find in other parts of the Caribbean. Um, the government of Trinidad and Tobago is be giving people things for free gate and all kinds of things. That's giving people things. And, and there, there is going to come a point where you're going to have to take these skills and then put in some, some real effort yeah. to get yourself going. Your that, that point is going to come. You're going to have to put in that sweat equity. <laughs> um, to, to really get going and, and without that it, it wouldn't really succeed that's why I was talking that's why I was so passionate about the Prince Swan the thing last year like, like show us that effort show us that there's effort after receiving these these things from the from the government or from a program or whatnot, because I, I could give somebody a, a whole curriculum about performance etc. and writing, and if they don't sit at home and practice, then they'll never be good. And I've seen it. Uh, these are for those who are not good. <laughs> I've seen it. Um, so you see, you have to put in the time and the effort. Um, how do you teach that? I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's stories, you know. It's story. It's, 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 Back the same, it's, it's the same thing. No, mind you, eh, in the old land time, not that I'm so old, the village used to gather. Before. Village, right? I'm using that word, you old. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> but the village used to gather around the guy. Eh? Mm-hmm. And the, the, the grill, the man who have all these stories, he would have told these stories. And I would know, okay, let me go down by the river at this point in time because fish could be dead at this point in time. And, that, and that's how our society would have grown but so much of our history has been lost so much of our the way in which we do things has been lost through innovation and through the internet and through this fast lifestyle i am i am going to take your whole thing your arm what's your name wait, 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 your curriculum mm-hmm. i'm going to read it once and i'm going to feel i better than you mm-hmm. and when and when you win and I lose the cheat. Yeah. You, you because uh-huh. I'm not taking any time to develop my craft. I'm not, I'm, I'm not taking any time to, to listen. But at the same time, you have to take that time to put me down and sit down, not when I'm back against the wall, not when I'm in prison. Do wait until I'm in prison or I, I'm incarcerated to come and tell me something. Find me when I'm free. Mm. Find me in school. Find me in kindergarten. All right. So what time has run out again, you know? <laughs> but um, I, I want to ask you guys because, I mean, people look at you and say, well, damn, it's a bunch of talkers. Everybody always talking and so on. But but you guys are on the beat. You guys are on the street. You all, I mean, I remember um, you all hosting the Don't Shoot Me um, on Brand Lara Promenade. You all had the... Um, my sister campaign. The, right. Well, several campaigns. Mm-hmm. The Mad Company has... Lots of production that that is about about empowering people in society mm-hmm. and so on. So so tell me some of the things that you that you all have done, you know, and so people don't all all just blagging here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, um, I work with a couple of groups. One of the groups is the Keys Foundation, and of course, performance arts is the major thing. Um, we use performance arts to, to reach people, but more importantly than that, which is what I tend to share with people. I'm, I'm going to reach our audience probably about 10 times a year, but every week we meet with about 30 youths. So that becomes the target audience, the youth that actually involve in the program, that actually yeah. doing the outreach. How can, what can I do or what can the team at the Kids Foundation do to make these youth better, to allow them to learn different things? 
to, to impress um, certain things on their, on their community. So that I always treat them as the major target audience. We meet weekly um, in Maloney and um, not only performance art skill, but it's all about spiritual development, that moral compass, yes. making sure that that's inside there. So when they go out to perform and we present different stories, they already know what is the morally correct decision each character should make and how that could be applied to their lives. And to me, once we do that, we are successful. Yeah. Yes. I am. Um, I, I wanted probably three stories. Probably three. Um, short. Since, like, since secondary school, this youth man wanted to play bad. Wanted to play football real bad, real, real, real bad. And I was like, his mother talked to him on on be, on be known to him, right? But like, you know what? I want you to join my drama group. Drama, you mad? Oh, I don't want to join no drama group. Football is the highlight of the school. Gustin was the best, is the best. Yes, I green machine. Say. Green machine, right? <laughs> and I pursued that youth. Now, I pursued him. I said, yo. So coach didn't take him. I said, come boy, come, come, come. He joined the drama group. He was no a lot top-notch actor. But I, I believe anybody could act. I say, put the time and energy yeah. into it, right? Um, lo and behold, came out to be one of the top actors in 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 any comic in any in, in, in company that that youth man had an opportunity when a lot of people he went with his friend signed up to do law after he did his 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 history degree mm-hmm. signed up to do law and he, he, he said wait what to do boy said, go and do law go and take the opportunity and do law and I look back, when, when, whenever I look back at the work that the man did, the transformation mm-hmm. of that yeah. very youth man, this, 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 this other young, young lady, she live in Navadriti, dropping home people, Darren talking about dropping home. When you have these groups, you have to drop home people in yeah. front of the house. <laughs> yeah. Dropping home people and you go in Las Lomas. She live in Navadriti. And she see a whole set of lights, a whole set of lights on the ground. I say, what is that? No, this, this child had to be more than 17. I said, I see airport. She said, what? I never been to the airport. Hmm. We drove. We had a big fanfare, about seven or eight of us in the airport. Welcome to the airport of Trinidad and Tobago, they started. Within six to eight months, that girl was in French Guyana. She 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 reached across, she went across to France. <laughs> Within a year, yeah. she, she, she was in France. Then after that, she now came back. Now came back from um, California, finishing her masters in film hmm. this is the work that and this work now not happening not happening fly by night you know every week every week every week you have to make yourself available for these young people and when you make yourself available to use young people these young people will bring forth fruit mm-hmm. yeah so beautiful stories thank you Dylan thank you Darren and we have to close off here. Mm-hmm. So here we are, folks. JC 24-7. Um, the discussion on crime and youth, its effects and so on. Takeaway from it is that crime affects everyone. The solution is to be found by all. Let's all put our hands to the plow because Christ says to us that he came that none should perish, mm-hmm. but that all should have eternal life. life. If we are believers of Christ, then that burden is something we should all take up. So I'm saying, if you, however, have been viewing and you want to get some intervention, some help, the number to call, 351-5030. God bless you. And as we say, be mindful, but stay hopeful. Have a good day. Have a good life.